Hi everyone. I don't think uh, anyone's uh, as yet watched my review of the other job ad that was posted, but I think they extended it again again, and I was, or no, they posted a couple reminders, and I was almost tempted to post back to Lister, if here's some thoughts, and then I'm like, don't be that jerk. So, instead, I have collated three uh, cataloging jobs that I like, that are actually pretty good, um, and I would go for if I uh, wasn't doing my current job and making too much money at that. Uh, so, this first one, as you can see on the screen, is uh, from our fine friends up north at Northern Michigan University. And a little personal note, uh, yeah, I told my coworker I was looking at this, and she's like, you're not going to apply, are you? And I'm like, well, it looks like fun, uh, but the downside is my husband made me swear not to go above the 44 uh, degree of latitude, so I haven't. Um, and the fun thing about looking up where Northern is, uh, I'll, I'll just admit now, I'm terrible at geography, even in my own home state that I've lived in for 40 plus years. Uh, for some odd reason, I thought <laughs> MTAC, Michigan Tech, and Northern were in the same town. And I also thought that that town was Marquette, and that Marquette was um, in the middle of Northern uh, UP, and it's not. So I kind of thought it was like here-ish. Uh, which is, as you can see, the Hiawatha National Forest, but no, it's up here. And then Amtec, if you want to live in a really cold place um, and hang out with a bunch of nerdy engineer people, is way up here at Houghton. So, yeah, this is the land of the cold and the snow, which younger me would have gone to, but I have an older spouse, and he doesn't want to, and then there's times when I sit there and go, yeah, you, you were right, we should, we should not do that. But this does look like a cool job. Uh, they're looking for an assistant professor, so... That's uh, a grade level under where I am, again, so not going to work for me, but tenure track, always good, uh, you're exempt, and this is the only thing that has me a little bit worried, because I'm never quite certain when people post competitive for salary, if competitive in this case means competitive for the industry or competitive compared to the local economy. Because um, one of the nice reasons I don't move uh, and like staying up in uh, rural America is uh, the local economy is kind of depressed. There are some things that are still going to be expensive no matter where you go, like gas, um, to some degree electricity, uh, and shipping. That's the other thing that increases the further away you are from civilization. But comparatively, uh, we make pretty good salaries, so that's why I wonder if competitive is going to be in like the 60s, but that's fine. You don't have to go anywhere, you just have to commit to being up north and freezing to death. Uh, but this sounds like fun. See, archival materials, variety of formats, you get to organize things, you get to make policies and procedures, and then we get, you know, down to the exciting parts. Uh, you know, this is a campus-based position, uh, foreign equivalent, um, and they're pretty, I don't know, they're pretty flexible in the work experience, because, uh, yeah, speaking from someone who is in northern Michigan and ain't that far north, uh, yeah. It's, it's hard to entice people up here sometimes. You either want to or you don't. Um, so, sounds like they're willing to cobble together experience for the EEOC um, threshold, but it's also kind of nice you see you do have equal amounts of library and archival standards, and as someone who came from archives and learned library stuff, um, I think it's pretty cool to have a job that does both. And obviously, you can see from Islandora, that's their digital asset management system. We just started on Islandora, and I'm still trying to figure things out, but I don't have to touch that that much. Um, so workflow, complex analytical work, hardware, software, prioritize things. Um, and I think this is possibly repetitive here, but, and uh, teamwork, colleagues. Yeah, I don't wanna say yeah, 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 it's still important. But uh, if you're gonna apply, we preferably prefer Alma, so that definitely says what system we're on. Um, library reference, which suggests you'd be doing reference, but again, Northern, I imagine this is about the size we are, maybe bigger, so um, I assume everybody gets to take a turn and wear the many hats. Um, and again, archive space, uh, you, get, you get some nice tip-offs in this one as to what their software is. Um, yeah, and send all this in and everything is good. So yeah, if you're wanting to go into the Great White North, um, yeah, the nice folks at Northern are looking. Uh, there are a couple other cool places, though. Um, and I'm just going to call this out. Uh, UPenn, this like side thing drives me crazy. So um, <laughs> try to ignore this while we review the cataloging and metadata librarian position. I really wish I could collapse that. It drives me nuts. I keep looking over here like this applies to this job and it does not. Um, but I do like this. Uh, it's hybrid eligible. I assume that, you know, means you have to be somewhat locally on site, which is fine. 
Um, I have never actually been to Philadelphia. I feel like I would like Philadelphia because I like Pittsburgh, but that could be totally wrong. Pittsburgh's pretty awesome, though. So that's why I'm like, I could kind of consider this. Um, unfortunately, Pennsylvania is not on my big six list because of other laws, but UPenn is pretty cutting edge and is, uh, yeah, beautiful urban campus, benefits. Uh, yeah, I love but, uh, let's see. It does original comic books, cataloging, fun, fun, fun. Authority work, fun, fun, fun. And, uh, batch loading, database maintenance, more cataloging of metadata. Oh, gift and distinctive collection cataloging projects. That's always fun, too. Uh, metadata standards, doing the DEI. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, open refine, so it helps if you know open refine. But, uh, yeah, distinctive collection work was okay. Oh, okay, so we get shared VDE. That gives you a tip off on their system. And uh, apparently you're going to have to train some staff and, you know, do what they called functional supervision before I got that taken on my job description. Um, it answers cataloging questions. Yep. Uh, this one specifically wants someone that's been in the field for a couple of years. Um, yeah, minimum of three years professional cataloging experience. And I'm guessing that's three years full time. So they're looking for someone with, like, a mid early to mid career that can do um, RDA, LCC. In this case, it doesn't look like they do nearly so much of the archival cataloging like Northern does. And the other reason I like Northern is I think they might have been the one that absorbed uh, Finlandia College's um, assets, which unfortunately poor Finlandia folded recently and they had a really cool um, Finnish archive and we're always looking for people um, who knew Finnish. I don't know Finnish, but Kind of curious if that's uh, Northern's where it ended up. Anyway, I'm sorry. I went down a rabbit hole on that. Batch loading, problem solving. Um, helps if you can do a natural capital cooperative cataloging program. Quite frankly, for the salary I'm going to show you, I'd be surprised if you find someone from PCC, but maybe you will. Um, yeah. Um, Bibframe, Synopia, Marva, shared VDE. Yeah. Knowledge you could probably have. Um, supervisor, yep. Working knowledge of one or more European languages. Um, again, for the salary down here, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. But again, it's under preferred. It's not, like, required. Just get you to the front of the, the pack. So, I mentioned the salary. I personally think the salary is a little bit low if you're asking people to live in the Philadelphia area. But it's also two to three years of experience out in the job market. So, I don't know. I know the wages are stagnating right now, so it's kind of hard to say. But... First, I'd up this a little bit. Hopefully, it'll be, like, over 50000 unless you are just, like, bare bones out of college. Um, background checks. And then they go into their nice um, oh, benefits. I'll give Penn some credit here. They do actually have some good benefits. Because normally, I don't read through all this. But, uh, yeah, it's like, you can go and look at the Arboretum and the art galleries and check out the music. Or, you know, go look at baseball. Uh, free discount admission for General Motors, creative options, and this thing. This is this is why I'm down here. Not the adoption assistance. We won't go there. Um, but the home ownership services thing. I haven't actually seen this too often, and maybe it's just because I haven't paid attention. I was paying far far more attention uh, five eight years ago um, with relocation assistance. But this is kind of nice. Uh, you get a forgivable loan. Interested in buying a home or currently residing in West Pennsylvania um, to use for closing costs or house improvement. So you can't actually get like a mortgage through UPenn, but you can get like a loan to like fix up your house or pay the closing costs. If you like many of us who are trying to buy the first, many people trying to buy the first house, um, you might not have that whole entire, you know, funds for doing the purchase and the closing. Or it's 10%, you have to put up for 20%. I forget. See, mine was done so weird. It's not even worth mentioning. All right. Which brings me to our last one, which is our fine friends down in Baylor. And I say down in Baylor because I would not have known this is down in Waco, Texas, if I hadn't looked at it. And I'm actually putting this up kind of in semi-promotion because they've extended their application process again. And uh, they posted on the listserv ad, and it's not on here, that their uh, base salary is $60,000. So that's not terrible. Um, I don't know what the economy is like in Waco, Texas, <laughs> so it might not be great for the area, but it's not as low as I've seen before, so, um, did base maintenance, woohoo, um, it is, oh, it's non-tenure track, um, so pros and cons of non-tenure track, uh, 
pros, you don't have to do a whole bunch of paperwork, you don't have to deal with unions, although unions don't necessarily go with tenure jobs. Um, mostly it's the paperwork and having to constantly teach and show your value. The downside to being non-tenure track is sometimes you are um, at will and can be laid off without a heck of a lot of notice. So it just depends on the place. But you can come and join our team and lead the things. Ooh, strategic deaccessioning initiatives. Um, on-site academic professional position. So yeah, they, they want you to be down in Texas. Um, oh, it's the oldest college in Texas. Yeah, I, I totally didn't know that. See, fun facts you learn. Um, and we'll see exactly what form of Christian they are in a minute. They're, they're Baptists, but you can, you can look at Waco, Texas. Um, in this case, we have the duties, so database maintenance, authority control, migration cleanup. Ha 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 you're probably still doing that, huh? Three, five, seven, I don't know, it depends on the pandemic hit, right? Um, ensuring everything's updated, setting work priorities, providing training, maintaining documentation, print monograph cataloging, uh, Moody and Jones general collections. I assume that's their libraries. For a second, I was sitting here thinking that was like, uh, I don't know. If that was a business database. I don't know why. I think Moody is like twinging something in my brain. That's not quite right. Um, waiting the training of people on the print monograph, keep, you know, up with the trends. Oh, okay, you have a e-resources serials person, so that's good. You don't have to do both of those things. Um, <laughs> but you do have to, you know, manage the team together and load the things, and maintain the community's own collections, and collaborates with the other catalog and metadata services people to do the things, keep the things running. Extra, oh, yeah, you have to do suggestible and holdings reports. That's fun. I'm guessing that's for iPads. Um, <laughs> and then we have the usual professional development. See, this is the, the, the interesting part, service and scholarship. Um, yeah. If you're a non-tenure track, I'm not quite sure exactly how strict places are on service and scholarship. But anyway, and I went through this a little bit with the, you know, expectations. So obviously the master's degree, um, I like that they put working knowledge, like you actually have to have been able to do monograph cataloging, not like take a class on it. Uh, familiar with principles, so in this case it's just like, you know, can you tell us what authority control is and how you possibly do it? Um, some familiarity with database maintenance, experience with automation tools, and then knowledge of like, do you know this exists? Have you looked at it once? Um, but yeah, the big one it looks like is this working knowledge and monograph cataloging. They don't want to bring someone in that's just like, how do I catalog a book? Or I did this for like a summer in between grad school. So um, yeah. And then we have the awareness of trends and DEI and emerging technologies and the usual analytical detail, prioritizing work, and ability to interact effectively with diverse campus population, which I imagine is much more diverse than it is up here, it being in Waco, Texas. So. Um, Spanish might also be a benefit, but desired job qualifications, relevant, you know, tech services is helpful, experience with original cataloging also helpful, same with batch editing, authority control, strongly preferred, again, we have Alma, yet again, um, and apparently it looks like they're looking, using the good old WorldShare record manager, as well as good old data manipulation tools, knowledge bases, link data, I know, they all kind of sound alike after a while, it's like, we want someone who does the cataloging. <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me, so yeah. Ability to see the big picture and implement specific granules. This is my favorite. I almost want to like excerpt that just for uh, <laughs> any other tech services position I may ever need to hire. <laughs> Ability to see the big picture and implement specific granular solutions. Because I'm not great at that. I'm always the one that's like, could somebody please tell me if I'm just like staring at the pine needles on the tree. <laughs> and usually it's like, yes, Deja, you're overthinking this. Anyway, um, and bibliographic knowledge of one or more languages in addition to English. I'm guessing they have a sizable Spanish population being in Texas, um, but they could also have a whole heck of a lot of other diversity I don't even know about. Um, but I do want to point out, because as most people, there's a ton of little tiny colleges and universities that uh, you don't always know their identities um, off the top of your head. And that's not just anything against Baylor or, or where I work. I know I get a lot of that when I tell people, and it's like, nope, <laughs> nobody knows. It's okay. <laughs> Perfectly fine with that. Um, but this one is uh, Baptist affiliated, so I'm guessing they're evangelical oriented. So if that's uh, not exactly your uh, jam, just a heads up on that. I don't know if that's necessarily part of the reason they're having trouble recruiting people, because it doesn't necessarily 
so far that I can see, um, say that you have to have like a specific church background. Um, most of the places I've applied that are um, religiously affiliated do require at least some sort of church attendance and or your pastor knows who you are, but I don't know. The last time I tried applying to one like that was Spring Arbor and it was like a decade ago and I was like, yeah, I, I can't. I just, I, I, I don't have the church attendance and I can tell you what my theory is on religion, but yeah, if you, you know, I, I feel like I should just end up by filling out this form and saying something like, if I just agree not to consult anyone on theology and sign a sheet, can, can you hire me? Because I will. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to contend with other people's um, theology. I'm just not, I'm not the person to do that. So trust me. Anyway, those are some jobs that are out there if you want cataloging and metadata work to go do that I thought were pretty interesting.